Hello there, welcome back to another video. This one is going to be about my top 5 cameras, well, top 5 film cameras of all time. I have shot on a wide range of cameras, ranging from a 8x10 large format camera to a really weird camcorder style 35mm point and shoot. In this video, I will just be talking about my top five favorites and why I like them so much and why I've shot them. In this top five list, I've shot all of these cameras numerous times and have some extensive experience with them. So you know that these just aren't one-off cameras that I've been like, whoa, this is amazing. Anyway, to start it off for number five, we have the Canon Model 7. This camera is a 35 millimeter rangefinder. Uh, it's made by Canon, obviously. It is an amazing camera to use. On it right now, I think I have, yeah, I have the Jupiter 12, I think it's called, 35mm lens. Uh, you can get a lot better lenses for this camera, but I am broke and I can't afford them. To put it simple, this is a Leica knockoff. It's basically just a Leica, but without the red badge. It functions the same, it gets the same results, but you know, it's a lot cheaper. A lot of people will be mad when I say that, but realistically a camera is just a light type box that you open and close the shutter and light goes in it exposes the film. What really matters though is the lenses, and I have cheaped out and got some Russian Jupiter lenses. I have this Jupiter 12, and I also have the Jupiter 850mm. Now why do I like this camera so much? I think it has to do something with the fact that it was my first 35mm rangefinder, and I haven't got one since, so it's my only one realistically. But it's a camera that I don't think I will ever get rid of. I was thinking about it recently, but I just can't bring myself to sell it because it is so cool. I've taken some great photos on this and I will continue to do so as time goes on. This camera has a built-in light meter as you can see here. It is quite easy for me because I've got quite big hands to put my finger over the second rangefinder part that you actually focus with but uh, I have gotten used to that now after a year with shooting with it. Luckily for me this is one of the models that you can find nowadays where the light meter actually works because a lot of them the light meter has failed and you can't use them. This camera's max shutter speed is a thousandth of a second which is pretty fast and it is good for capturing high motion uh, shots especially for street photography. The shutter on this camera is also very quiet. That sounds quite loud like obviously it's right next to the mic but that is very quiet. This camera is absolutely beautiful. You cannot beat the rangefinder aesthetic and they are honestly some of the best looking cameras you will ever find. Everything about this camera I love. I don't think there's anything about it that I'm not in love with and I'm so happy I bought one. Plus they are also very cheap and you can find them anywhere from £100 to £400. They also do have one of the most sought after lenses of all time and that is the Canon 50mm 0.95 I think. If you want to get one of these with one of those that is going to probably cost you around a grand and a half, maybe two grand. I can't remember how much they are now, but last time I checked they were in the thousands. But if you're like me and you want a cheap alternative to a Leica, then this is your best option. Now moving on to number four, this is probably a very big surprise to most people. It is my Yashica FX3. What I love most about this camera is not the actual camera itself, but the lenses that it can use, specifically the quirks of this lens. This camera itself is not necessarily some amazing, world-changing piece of kit, it is just an SLR, but I think it's the lenses that I got with it and the way this camera feels to use is what I love most about it. The lens that I currently have on here is the 50mm 1.9. I'm not actually sure who it's by, I think it might be Yashica themselves, but I do have about 5-6 lenses for this camera, as one day in college my teacher let me just go through this storeroom and pick out and keep whatever I wanted that I found, and I found a Yashica something or other with loads of lenses with it, but the camera itself didn't work and it took me over a year just to buy this camera and I'm so glad I did. Shooting with this camera is very fun. I don't necessarily get any like super high quality images as the lenses were stored in a storage room for a long time and 
obviously just being stored in a box in a storage room is not going to be the best way to store a lens. The explanation of that camera was a lot shorter than the Model 7, but that is because it's not necessarily anything amazing, it's just fun to use and the lenses have some nice quirks to them. Moving on to number 3, we have the Olympus Mu 1. This camera is so fun to use and it's so small and just easily pocketable and the photos that you get from it are actually quite high quality which is kind of crazy for something this small and it's just a point of shoot. This camera has a 3.5 I think? Yeah, 3.5 35mm lens so it's nothing amazing but it is very good. You can get the Olympus Mu 2 which has a 2.8 lens but in my opinion a 2.8 lens is not needed on a point and shoot when you can't even control the aperture. This camera has a built-in flash and a, I think it's called a clamshell design where it falls over and protects the lens. I'm not entirely sure if that's what it's called, but yeah, I've taken this out on many occasions and got some great photos with it, including when I went on a uni trip to Bristol, my uni press and editorial photography award ceremony. I got some great photos there of just everyone having a good time and you know, an award show basically. I usually shoot black and white film on this camera as I don't really see the point in using colour film for 35mm. I know a lot of people will disagree with that, but in my opinion 35mm colour film is just not really worth it for the price and for the quality of the images. I'd much rather get a medium format roll of colour film and have 10 images but be happy with those 10 men, 10 but be happy with those 10 images. I can't fucking speak today. Right, now moving on to number two. Uh, this camera I do not have, but I used to own one and it was a dream to use and I wish I never sold it. And this camera is the Mamiya 7. I used to own this camera around a year ago. Well, I sold it around a year ago. I did own it from, I think, July last year until November last year and I shot with it quite a bit and it was a dream to use. It's a 6x7 camera so the negatives are going to be huge and full of detail and quality and the depth of field is going to be crazy. I had the 80mm f4 I think it is and uh, it was just amazing for portraits, for landscapes, for anything really and I really do kick myself for selling that camera but I actually sold it for over a thousand pounds more than I bought it so that's quite good. This camera is great for literally anything apart from very close up portraits as it is a rangefinder and you can't focus that close with rangefinders and that is one of the drawbacks of this but I guess with this I'm mainly doing street photography so it is what it is. The Mamiya 7 is so light that it is very easy to take around anywhere and it's quite hard to notice that you're even carrying the camera. I think it is about the same weight as my Canon Model 7 which is crazy since it is about twice the size of this if not two and a half times bigger so it is quite crazy that it weighs so little. Um, the only thing wrong with them though is the, I think it's the processor chip that is in them, uh, it ends up going after a while and because they are an old camera and Mamiya is no longer around I don't think you can get them fixed at all unless you buy another camera and take out the chip and put it in your one but in which case you may as well use a new camera and that is a lot of money to be spending just to be able to use the camera again. That is one of the reasons why I sold it but also last year I was not accustomed to uni and I was not accustomed to how much I would be spending on travel so I just needed to sell my camera to even be able to attend but then I got very ill and everything went wrong last year. <laughs> but yeah I really wish I didn't sell that camera. I, I didn't really have a choice but if I did have the choice I really wish I could just get it back for free because it was such a nice camera. I don't particularly fancy paying like it's, it's around three, three and a half grand now for one of those cameras. In fact that was actually my first ever film camera that I bought because I did have film cameras before like the one that um the one that I got my Yashica lenses for but I didn't buy it and I never was able to use it because it was broken but the Mamiya 7 is the first camera that I ever bought. 
well, first film camera that I ever bought. Now we're moving on to number one. This camera is honestly my favourite camera of all time. I really wish I owned one and one day I will, but for now I did just make a very big purchase on... This is a Pentax 67. This is not the number one camera, but this will probably end up being the number one camera at some point. It's very heavy. <laughs> But yeah, the number one camera is the Mamiya RZ67. I used this camera all throughout college uh, for the two years that I was there and I honestly couldn't thank my tutors enough for letting me use that camera as it completely inspired me to continue with photography, get into film photography and get into like the old processes. I actually can still use it now that I'm at uni because I think they have like six of them there but it's just not as easy because you have to book them out and a lot of people are using them all the time and that's why I love the one that I was using at college because I was the only one there into shooting film so it was very easy for me to just be like oh hey can I use this for like a week and they'd be like yeah sure just don't break it. <laughs> that camera is honestly the best camera I've ever used. It's amazing. Once again it is 6x7 negative so it is crazy detail crazy quality, crazy depth of field, and the really cool thing with that camera, uh, along with many other things, but the really cool thing that I like is to take a portrait, like portrait orientation, you just have to flip the back, there's no flipping the camera and holding it at weird angles, you can just, and it's perfect. The lens that I mainly use on that camera was the 110mm 2.8 as it was amazing for portraits and I was really inspired by Rosie Matheson and her boys project which I do actually have. I do actually have the Rosie Matheson boys magazine and I do actually have it signed. Uh, it was my birthday when I got this and I told her that I was definitely going to get it for my birthday it was like two months in advance and my mum ended up buying it and uh, I think she might have said like, yo, it's my son's birthday or something. I'm, I'm guessing she knew, but uh, she put, Taryn, happy 18th birthday, keep shooting, love Rosie. And that is, that is one of the coolest things I have ever got, um, along with my signed special KSI thing, which was very cool to get. Uh, this literally inspired my whole creative journey with film photography. This along with the Mamiya RZ67 and my lecturers at college, they really kickstarted me into film photography. But if you have any questions about these cameras, leave a comment down below and I will do my best to answer it as quick as possible. If you are thinking about using any of these cameras or getting any of them, specifically the Mamiya RZ67 and the Mamiya 7, I highly recommend doing it. These are those are the two best cameras I have ever used, and uh, I really wish I had a Mamiya RZ67, and I really wish I didn't sell my Mamiya 7. <laughs> if you are looking at getting one of these, I really recommend it. These are so fun just for, you know, taking photos of random moments, maybe at sentimental moments, maybe it's just nights out, which I've done many times on these, as they are amazing for it. And if you're looking to get a very cheap SLR, I really recommend the Yashica FX3, as you can get some great lens options for it. It's very cheap, I got this for £40, and it's just very reliable, and yeah, it's a bit of a tank, even though it does not feel like it. And if you're looking for a cheap rangefinder, I very much recommend this. I do love this camera a lot, but I just have to put the Yashica FX3 above it just for the lens selection that I have and for the versatility of the Yashica FX3 over the Canon Model 7. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like, uh, comment any questions, comment anything you want to say, uh, subscribe to this channel as I am pumping out videos at the moment. Well, I am recording many videos at the moment. I'm not sure how quickly they're gonna be uploaded, but yeah, I'm really putting effort into this channel as I am loving making videos. Seeing the amount of views and support I got on some of my latest videos really is inspiring me to make more videos. So yeah, anyway, I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.